Well, it is finally here. It is Cup Final Day. Yes, <clears throat> Scottish Cup Final Day today. Old firm Cup Final Day, even more importantly. Yes, that is right. Old firm Cup Final Day. Not Glasgow Derby Day. Not Glasgow Derby Cup Final Day, as the other half of the city will try to make you believe. It is the old firm. It is nothing more intense. Forget your Manchester Derby down south. Forget City v United. Forget all those rivalries. There is only one rivalry in Britain, and that is Rangers versus Celtic. There is no more intense rivalry in Europe, in my opinion, than when the two Glasgow Giants go head to head, as they will this afternoon at Hampden Park, to decide who gets a double this season. Yes, do Rangers come away with the season with a cup double, or do Celtic come away with a league and cup double, and worse still, draw level with Rangers in terms of the number of trophies won. Well, this, this morning, this afternoon, depends obviously when you're watching this video ahead of the game, obviously. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of official Hefte news. Yes, it is official. Yes, we even have the picture or the pictures even. And Danio even made a special guest appearance at Hefte's signing today. We're going to talk Cup Final. We're going to talk Todd Cantwell. We're going to talk, obviously, about the game today and how important it is for Rangers to get the victory in today's Cup Final. But first, let's start with a little bit of news away from the Cup Final, if we may. Yes, it is finally official. Hefte, the Brazilian defender, has made a permanent switch to Ibrox. Uh, deal is done, signed. There he is with the shirt, wearing the training top. You cannot get much more official than that. And like I said to you on the video the other day, yes, Fabrizio Romano means it's 99.9% .9 certain, but you've obviously got to see the shirt picture and the scarf picture. There is a scarf picture, I am assured, somewhere, so do not panic. Uh, but there we go. There is Hefte with the Rangers shirt. Obviously, this season's Rangers shirt, as next season's, is not out yet. Um, with the training top on, he cannot obviously play yet. He cannot be officially signed until the transfer window opens. And obviously, subject to international clearance. But it is a done deal. All signed on the dotted line. Hefte is now a Rangers player. Despite, obviously, late moves by Apoel Nicosia to try and, you know, destroy that move as they wanted to keep the player. Uh, of course, Hefte was welcomed to Ibrox by his fellow countryman, Danio, the Brazilian striker, the £6 million Brazil, uh, pound striker, who obviously we have to hope um, is good to go and ready to go next season and ready to bring his A game. I mean, two Brazilians, absolutely fantastic. Let's hope that they are the sorts of Brazilians that bring skill, style and ability and talent. Now, Hefte spoke to the media after his signing and he said this. He said, I am incredibly excited to join Rangers. This is a fantastic opportunity for me to take my career to the next level with such a historic and successful club. I'm already looking forward to meeting my new teammates, working with the coaching staff and continuing to learn and develop my game. So some great points to pick out from what Hefte said um, when he was unveiled. I mean, obviously one that he is raring to go, that he sees this as a great opportunity, that he sees the club for what it truly is, a historic, a successful, a great club. Um, obviously, meeting his new teammates, that could change, and I think he will appreciate that over the summer, that will massively change as Rangers seek to rebuild. No matter what the result is today in the cup final, there will be a rebuild. Um, and the other thing about him continuing to learn and develop his game, you know, this is the situation we are in. You know, he is a young player. He's 22 years old. You know, he's still got a lot of time to learn, a lot of space to develop, a lot of time to get better. I mean, obviously, that is the hope. It is very much the trading model esque uh, signing. You know, as we look to sort of bring in players, develop them, bring them on, and then flip them for a lot of cash down the line to get this trading model going. Philippe Clement also spoke about his new signing, Hefte. This is what he had to say. Uh, he has said, Hefte is an exciting young defender and I'm delighted that he has joined our squad so early in the summer period. He has already shown he is a player of great quality and potential and I am confident he can play a big part in our squad moving forward. I look forward to working with him in the months to come. 
So it's you know it's clear that he obviously sees him as a defender. He spelled that out. I know there's some talk of him, you know, possibly playing left wing or left midfield, which he can also play. But it's clear that uh, Philippe Clement sees him as a defender. You know, he's already ta he's talked about the potential he has, the quality he has, the talent that he already has. But you know, talked as well about the fact that you know he is a player that is going to be developed and made better. But certainly, great news uh, to have Hefte. Finally, as a Rangers player, our first official signing of the summer, hopefully of many more to come. Obviously, giving a lie to the fact that we are skint. Who said that? Well, we know who said that, don't we? The most deluded fans in the world. Um, let's face it, great as well. Hopefully, you know, we'll see more of the Neo next season. Hopefully, we'll see these two combining some good goals, some great play and some Samba-esque football in the season to come. Now, today's cup final, there has been so much discussion over the team. There's been so much talk about who will play, who will not play. Now, I think I made my I made my views fairly clear on the podcast yesterday morning about, you know, Borna Barisic, John Lundstrom, et cetera, et cetera. And on the video yesterday, you know, look, you all know I don't want Lundstrom to start today. I think Clemon will start him. I think Clemon is making a massive, huge mistake. You know, one thing that's kind of worried me, Clemont wise and, and I've got nothing against Philippe Clement. I am not a fan that wants him sacked. I am not a fan that says that he is not the man. I'm not saying that for the minute. And I think he does need time to bed in his ideas, to get his squad together, to get his players together and not work with the cast-offs and rejects from Gio Van Bronckhurst and of course Michael Beale. And he does need time. That is absolutely clear. But Look, one thing that does worry me is the fact that in the four old firm games to this point, he has been tactically outdone, outthought and outfought by Brendan Rodgers. He's got his team selections wrong. He's got his tactics wrong. And it's not until sort of half time or an hour into the game that he's kind of changed it for the better and got the team, you know, being more progressive, more attacking and taking control of the game. And that, for me, is a worry going into today's game that he will again get the team selection wrong. You know, look, yes, you know, we have a lot of injuries. Yes, we are missing an awful lot of players. I understand that 100%. And, you know, ideally, idealistically, today we would be naming a very strong team. Um, you know, with Butland probably, I mean, if you were going for the strongest possible 11, if everybody was fit, I mean, it would probably look a little bit something like this. And I don't say that these are our best 11 players. This is just what I think he would pick. Tav, Goldson, uh, Suter and Ridvan, Diamande, Lundstrom, Cortez, Cantwell, Sima and of course uh Danilo up front. I mean that team for me is full of the things that we're missing at this moment in time. Pace, um, you know, aggression, forward movement, clinicalness in front of goal. These are all things that I think as a club we are currently missing. And I think that these are the things that the likes of Danilo and Cortez and Sima will bring to the team once they are fit and back and raring to go. So I do think they are massive misses. Of course I do. They are huge, huge misses. Now, one player for me that has to play today is Todd Cantwell. Now, Clemon, this is another example of him getting his tactics wrong, getting his team selections wrong, has picked Tom Lawrence for the last two games. Now, you know, I, you know I've got nothing against Tom Lawrence. You know I'm a big Tom Lawrence fan. Uh, but the last couple of old firm games, he has been particularly poor. The game has passed him by. You know, he's not been there to influence it. You know, he has been very poor in the last two old firm games. At the game at Ibrox, for example, he was absolutely anonymous. And I think it was, you know, completely crazy that Todd Cameron was left out of the last two old firm games. Now, Todd Cameron has scored goals in his last couple of games. He appears to be back on form. He appears to be back to his best. Now, for me, this is this is a huge opportunity for Todd Cannwell. He needs to go out there, really impress, really work hard, really fight hard and, you know, impose himself on this game. You know, this boy has all the talent in the world, you know, and he gets an awful lot of hatred from an awful lot of fans. And I think that's absolutely bang out of order. Um, you know, a lot of that hatred and, and that uh, that slaughtering that he gets comes from his social media activities, particularly on Instagram. But I think, you know, Fans need to remember we live in a social media age. We live in an age where social media is, is, is a massive part of any young person's life. And Todd is still in his 20s. He's still a young person. Um, you know, 
we have still got, as much as it might seem funny to some of you, freedom of speech in this country. Now, we are all entitled to express our own opinions, our own views, to express how we feel and to express what we're thinking. And I think that's what Todd Cantwell has done at times through his social media posts. Do I think some of them are ill-timed? Yes, possibly. Do I think that he, you know, should be continued to be allowed to do this? Yes, of course I do. You know, if you take away a person's right to express themselves, to, to say what they want to say, providing obviously it doesn't incite racial hatred or, or you know, it doesn't display racism or any sort of other bigotry, then I, I haven't got a problem with it. I genuinely haven't. You can't take away that person's right to express themselves. Every person has that right. And Todd has that right. And I think some of us forget, you know, had Paul Gascoigne grown up in the social media age, could you imagine the stuff that he would be putting on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera? You know, today, for me, Todd Canwell, I think, could become critical to this game. You know, I mean, look, they hate him. That's one thing. You know, he leads the press for us. He's physical. He's strong. He's quick. He gets him in people's faces. He, you know, he is aggressive in the press. And that's something we need to have against Celtic. You know, we need whoever is the right side of the attacker, hopefully Abdallah Seema um, and Todd Canwell, putting pressure on the left-hand side of this Celtic defence scales. And Taylor are not very good and are very shaky at times. So for me, you know, Todd Canwell has to start. You know, you look at what else he brings. You know, he's got that ability to run at players, to go past players. He's got that ability to play a killer pass, to finish it off, you know, to, to, to unlock a defence, even the tightest of defences, which I don't think Celtic particularly have. So for me, Todd Canwell has to start. If Todd Canwell doesn't start today, I think that sends a huge message to to him that he's not wanted at the club. That you know that this is um, perhaps a situation that he needs to move on from in the summer. And that still may be the board and Philippe Clermont's intention. I don't know. I don't pretend to second guess them. But for me, Todd has to start today. You know, like I said, he is one of the leaders on the pitch and he is one of the new breed of leaders on the pitch. Guys, get me know, let me know what your opinion is. But my opinion, Cameron has to start. I think we need to get off his back. Now, today is absolutely vital for me to get this victory since 2012. You know, I, I know we didn't start in 2012. I'm not saying that. I'm not like one of their fans in saying that. What I'm saying is since we moved back into the top flight, taking that as a starting point, we have only won 11 games out of 40 against them. We have been outscored 74 to 47 and our win percentage against them is 27.5%. You know, that needs to change. That needs to be turned around to be put back on, on the right track. And, and look, to some extent, yes, today's game is a, is a standalone game. You know, yes, it's a cup final. Of course it matters. And of course, you know, you know, we, we're getting the battle fever on. Of course, you know, that we're going to want to win. Of course, we want to be in their faces. Of course, we want to fight for every ball. You know, that, that's just who we are. And that's what this rivalry, this derby is. But for me, you know, we've got to start to put that right, to turn that around, to send a signal that, you know, they are not the big force in Scotland. They think they are, that we are. And we get back to our rightful place, back at the top of the Scottish game. And certainly since 2012, perhaps, you know, with the exception of the Stephen Gerrard era in, in under 55, we've never really consistently dominated them or, you know, or, or put them back in their boxes to some extent. So that is something we do need to develop and work upon starting today. Today has to be kind of a line in the sand. And I'm not saying that, you know, if we go out there and we win today, everything is rosy in the garden, everything is hunky-dory. Certainly isn't. There is certainly an awful lot of faults still in this team. But, you know, I think Clemon realises that, you know, he does realise that there's a rebuild needed. So whatever happens, you know, today, we've got to push this today to get this victory. We cannot afford to allow them to get any closer to us in terms of trophies won. Now, for those of you who watched my podcast yesterday, I revealed my starting 11 to you. This is my starting 11 for today. I do not think for one minute this is what Philippe Clemon will pick. I do have a nightmare scenario in terms of team selection, if you want to know what that is. Go and watch the podcast from yesterday. So, Butland in goal picks himself. Tav at right back. I'm hoping that the big Leon is fit now. Clemon did speak about not wanting to give too much away, not wanting to talk about to players who, who are um, obviously out injured. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping big Leon is back. I really do. Ben Davis, I think, continues at left side centre back. I think he's done quite well since he's come in. Again, another player that gets a lot of criticism, but I think, you know, in recent weeks, certainly the games he's recently played, he's acquitted himself very, very well. Now, with the likelihood that Ridvan misses, I don't want to see Borna Barisic under any circumstances playing as a left-back. You know, how many times has he shut the bed against Celtic? 
Uh, for me, give Robbie Fraser a game. You know, I don't think we've got a lot to lose. Robbie Fraser is is. I don't think we'll make this team any weaker than it than than it already is. He's good going forward. He's good defending. You know, he's a top 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 player, a young player. And, you know, I think you know if you give him that that um, influence, I think he'll definitely take it. I think he'll step up. Uh, Dio and Sterling for me in central defensive midfield. Give Dio. You know, someone who will play that slightly bit further forward, but still destroy, still hold it at the back, still be that defensive midfielder for him to get the ball off and then go and create, break the lines with his passing, etc. So that's why I'm going Dio and Sterling. My three behind the main striker, Seema, Cantwell and Silva. You know, Seema has to start right side. You know, they are very weak down the left side. Greg Taylor is very, very weak. And the more we can get Seema going at him, like he did in that second half at Ibrox, the better, because he certainly had the beating of him. I've already said why Cantwell should play. And Silva had a good game against them at Parkhead, so I can't see any reason to drop him. Dessers will start from because realistically there is absolutely nobody else at this period, at this moment in time. Well, guys, look, today is going to be tough. Today is huge. It is massive. This is a game we've got to win. I'm going 2-1 Rangers. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below. Guys, I'm going to wish you all the very best. Wish Rangers all the very best for this afternoon. Let's get this done, boys. Let's go out there. And if you're leaving the club in, in the summer, let's leave with your head held high. Let's leave with something to really celebrate and to have as that final memory for you in a Rangers shirt. As always, on the way out, there's two things I ask of you. Number one, please obviously smash that like. It helps defeat the evil algorithm. And number two, remember always, no matter what, we are the people. <laughs>